Hey, my friend, welcome to the Art of Online Business podcast. My name is Rick Mulready, and I'm an online business coach. I'm an ads expert, and most importantly, I'm a dad. And this show is where we help established online course creators and coaches create more profit, more impact with less hustle. All right, let's get into it. Hey, what's up, my friends? Rick here. Welcome to episode number 595 here on the show. This is another quick tip episode, a Friday quick tip episode. And today I want to talk to you about why your free Facebook group is actually hurting your business. Now, I know there's going to be some of you who are listening right now who are saying, Rick, what are you talking about? My group is amazing. Okay. And cool. I will get to that in just a second. But I want to share with you today a common theme that I've been seeing for years now. I see this time and time again when it comes to free Facebook groups, and that is they're actually hurting your business. They're doing more harm than good for your business. And of course, as with anything, as I just mentioned, there's always outliers and exceptions, right? People have communities that are, that are actually worth their focus and their attention, right? They're being very intentional and strategic about the community. But more often than not, these Facebook groups are, uh, again, actually doing more harm than good. And I want to share today the top two reasons why I say this. Okay. So number one, you are at the will of the Facebook group algorithm. So if you have a free Facebook group and you post something, just because you post something in that group does not mean that everyone's going to see it, especially if you have a larger Facebook group, right? One of the single biggest frustrations of people that I work with who have large Facebook group communities is that it's become so hard to get any kind of reach with their posts. I mean, it's your group, right? Like you created it. And so of course you want see, you want people to see what you're posting, but yet We post something, you know, ourselves, again, it's our group. We post something in there because we want, you know, our thousands of people to see what we're posting and then it's crickets, right? It gets hardly any reach, a super, super small percentage of the people, overall number of people in the group actually see it. So it's like, well, why am I even posting, right? So that is number one. Number two is when we create free Facebook groups, we usually create them just to build a community of our people, right? Now, there's some of you, there's many of you, I'm sure, that that have a an actual intention behind creating a Facebook group or why you created the Facebook group that you already have. But again, what I usually hear from people is that, well, I just wanted to, to attract my ideal people. So I wanted to, so why not create a Facebook group? And you know, have all my people in this Facebook group community and start talking to them, right? Maybe we're hoping that we can use it to move people to our email list. Maybe we want to do live trainings in the group. Maybe we want to use it to learn what our people's challenges are, right? The questions they ask and the language that they use, which is a very good reason, by the way. We have the best of intentions. What usually happens with these groups, though, is they become a place where people come for free help. Either you, as the group creator, are in the group freely answering their questions. You're doing, you know, you're showing up on a regular basis and doing Facebook Lives and all this other stuff, right? And then also others in the group are giving all the answers to what people are asking as well. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying I'm going to repeat that. I am not saying that offering free help is bad. Okay. To an extent, right? There's, there comes a, there's a, there's a, there's an extent to that, right? You reach a point. I mean, people DM me all the time, for example, in Instagram and they ask me a question and I'm more than happy to answer as, as many as I possibly can. But the problem becomes with the Facebook group when people are getting all the help they need for free in your Facebook group and they don't need your paid offer or offers as a result. Again, this is something I see over and over and over. I mean, why would they pay for something 
when they're getting all the help that they need for absolutely free. And it's when this is happening is when there's a problem. I mean, you're running a business after all. This is not a hobby and you deserve to be compensated for your expertise, for your specialty, for your zone of genius. So here's a perfect example. Someone I work with uh, right now has an amazing membership. They also had a very large Facebook group. And the Facebook group had become this community where, number one, the creator, my student, whenever they posted anything, it would have an abysmal reach. No one would see their posts. Okay, so problem number one. And, and that is, by the way, I can hear some of you thinking right now or saying out loud right now, you're yelling at me like, well, they're not doing engagement right or they're not posting, you know, silly engagement questions just to boost the engagement and game the algorithm. Okay, maybe, but is that really adding benefit to your Facebook group community, right? And so number two, my student, they were doing live trainings, answering people's questions in there. And then other people who were in the group were getting all the answers that they needed, whether it was from my student, right? The person running the group and created the group or from others in the group. And many in the group, by the way, were also current or past members of my student's membership. And so why would people in this free Facebook group community want or need to join the membership when they're getting all their questions answered for free. And after lots of deliberation, looking at all the numbers and coaching on this, the decision was made to close the group. Now, this was a really scary decision and I totally get that. I can totally empathize with that. And as, a, as scary as it was to do this, a funny thing happened not too long after the free Facebook group was closed. Number one, engagement in the membership went up, which can have a direct effect on retention and churn because people who were already members of the membership, they were also in the Facebook group and they weren't logging into the membership community. They were just in the Facebook group and asking questions and getting everything they needed and they weren't even logging into the membership. I mean, they were paying for it, but they weren't even logging into it, okay? And then, so engagement went up. Engagement in the membership went up, which again is gonna have a direct relation to retention and reducing churn. The other thing that happened is new signups to the membership increased. What they were seeing was people who were, in, who were once in the Facebook group they were now joining the membership and they were commenting things like, wow, I had no idea all these other things were available to me inside this membership over here. Even though my student had been, you know, clearly messaging and communicating and everything like that about their membership, the so many people were in the Facebook group community and just sort of like, all right, cool, this is where I go. I don't need to see anything else or they weren't aware of anything else because they were so wrapped up into, hey, I'm getting everything I need over here in the Facebook group community. And I very much project that these two trends, increased engagement, which can lead to uh, increased retention, decreased churn, and also a continued upward trend in new signups as a result, they're gonna continue. Thus, increasing revenue and increasing profit and also increasing lifetime customer value because people are staying in the membership that much longer. Okay, and then lastly, you don't own the house that you're building this community in, right? So this is another reason why I don't love free Facebook groups. And heck, for, for, this, for this reason alone, you know, so for our accelerator coaching program, we have a Facebook group community. Like our community is in a Facebook group. If I were, and there's been, there's years of, um, years of content in there and conversation. This is gold, right? Um, by the way, at the time recording this right now, we have three open spots 
for my accelerator coaching program. So it's application only. If you want to apply, go to rickmulready.com forward slash accelerator. Okay. This is for established online course creators, coaches, or teacher entrepreneurs who want to take their business to the next level and want my help and my team's help and the rest of the accelerator community uh, to help you with it. And uh, I have capped the number of people in the group. And right now we have three spots available. Okay. So going back to that, the reason I mentioned accelerators, if I were to do that again, if I were to start over, I would not do a Facebook group as part of the program. I would take the community and uh, put it into uh, 10X Pro, which I'll talk about here in a second. And the reason for this, again, just let me just, I just got off on a tangent there. We don't own the house basically where our community is living, right? Meaning we don't own Facebook. One change to the algorithm or worse, Facebook one day up and decides that, you know what, we're going to remove this group. You're kind of screwed, <laughs> right? You know, my good friend, James Shramko from the super fast business podcast and superfastbusiness.com refers to this as owning the race course. This is a term that he coined like 12 years ago. I first heard him say this, owning the race course. You want to be in control of as much as possible in your business and not be at the whim of an algorithm or a platform. And when we have a free Facebook group community, we are very much, if, if we're relying on that community as the lifeblood, for example, of our business, we are very much at the whim of Facebook and the algorithm. Okay, so here are today's takeaways for you. All right, number one, if you are thinking about starting a Facebook group for your business, I really want you to consider what I've just shared with you. What is the intention behind your wanting to start the group? Now, if you have the intention of, I want to create a community where it is solely to listen to the challenges and problems that the, the people that I want to be helping are sharing so that I can grab language. I can see exactly what they're asking so that I can use that in my marketing and so forth. And that is it. Cool. All right. I would say, okay. I still don't love it, right? Because there's other ways to do that. I mean, get on a Zoom call with people, with your target people, right? Get on a Zoom call, get on a Zoom call with your, with your customers. There's other ways to do that, right? Now, if you already have a Facebook group, does it, I want you to think about this, does it align with your original intention of having a group? Because again, most people, most people start a group with like, oh, I just want to create a community of, of people to attract the people that I want to, that I want to uh, help. Right. Then it morphs into this like free, you know, free help, essentially. So does it align if you already have a group? Does it align with your original intention of having a group? Could it be hurting your business? Like the example of my student, you know, could it be hurting your business right now? Think about number two, think about what might happen if you close the group. Would, you know, what, what would that do? Right. And I'm, I'm not telling you just to up and close it. I, my goal with this episode here is to share with you how having a free Facebook group could very well be hurting your bottom line, could be hurting the amount of revenue uh, potential that you can be generating in your business, right? So if you were decided to close the group, how might it increase the revenue from your paid offer or paid offers? How would you get the people from the group that you're closing into your offer? Right. And think through those things. And then number three, because we don't own that house, I would encourage you to look at other platforms to build your community. Like I mentioned, 10xpro.io. They have an awesome community and forums functionalities built right into it. In fact, the uh, community function, they call it a social wall, and it looks and operates very much like a Facebook group page. OK, and among other things, you can do forums in there. You have they have pre-built funnels. Uh, you create your you put your courses in there, create your courses, an affiliate center, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am a proud affiliate because I use 10X Pro in my business. Love them. I love being able to consolidate all these expensive tools into one very manageable um, 
monthly payment. So if you want to check it out, go to rickmulready.com forward slash 10 X pro the number 10, the letter X pro. Okay. Or outside of that, you can go to a platform like circle, right? Which is a tool that helps you build communities and so forth. Many of you have already heard of, of circle, right? Now you might be saying, well, Rick, I don't own those platforms either. Well, no, but you can very easily export information in there and you have people's email addresses, not the case with Facebook groups. Okay. So there you have it, my friend, probably a controversial viewpoint on Facebook group communities, but this is something I see over and over and over. And my goal here is to help you create the best possible business for yourself so that you're creating more profit for yourself, more impact without all the hustle right? And creating a successful business, whatever success means to you. So thank you, my friend, as always for listening. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe to the podcast here on whatever platform that you listen. And until next time, my friend, be well, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, my friends, if you are an established online course creator and or coach, or maybe you're a teacher entrepreneur and you want to be growing and scaling your online business to the next level, whatever that next level looks like for you, but maybe you're feeling stuck in your business. You're not really sure what next steps to take, things to be doing in your business in order to grow and scale your business. Maybe you're doing all the things and you're feeling overwhelmed. Um, and maybe you're heading towards burnout, right? Maybe you just want to plan on how to grow your business without working longer and harder. Well, that is exactly what we help you do inside of our accelerator coaching program. This is about helping you create more profit, more impact with less hustle, because my friend, this is not about working more hours, longer hours and harder, et cetera right? This is about helping you get unstuck so that you stop spinning your wheels and you are creating the business that is ideal for you and helping the kind of people that you want to help while generating the revenue and profit that you want to be generating. If this sounds like something you're interested in, this is one-on-one coaching, group coaching, and a mastermind experience where we give you a growth plan that you follow step-by-step for your specific business. This is personalized coaching, right? And you're also surrounded by support, other coaching from the other members and accountability. That is what embodies our accelerator coaching program. This is application only, and it is rolling ongoing open enrollment. This is not open close, right? So if you want to learn more and apply, just go to rickmulready.com forward slash accelerator. All right, my friends, thank you as always for tuning into the episode here today. Super appreciate you. Until next time, be well, and I'll chat with you soon.